everyone, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramph. And that was Asaph Adonai with that pretty sweet tune this morning. What was that, Asaph? That's called Baby Elephant Walk. I like that. <laughs> that was cool. It's kind of like a little fun. It's kind of like a heavy light march. It's like a heavy mm-hmm. light march. Yep. Yeah. Kind of like a baby elephant. Mm-hmm. Aww. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday. We have a great show for you. This week is Fringe Fest, and we've got mm-hmm. a couple performers from Fringe Fest. Their duo show is called Figment. We will hear from them in a few minutes. But first off, we've got a regular weather. But there's something different. I still feel like there's something following me. What's following you, Scott? Uh oh. Oh. Is that sign? <gasps> ah, is that someone skating on Saturn? Yeah, someone skating on Saturn. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> but of course, that is the Fringe Festival, and it's going to be going on all week. And of it's course, a... we'll have that poster on all week as yeah. well. The Fringe Festival is a performing arts festival uh, filled with music and theater and dance and all these different wonderful mm-hmm. activities that people like to do. It's a great venue for people to get their show out there um, that doesn't have to cost very much, and you can literally just do whatever you want. Yep, and even the uh, venues are as uh, artsy as the performers yeah. as well. Yeah, last night I went to, over to the Crystal Theater, and it got to see a little showcase of some of the performers from this week, and it looks like everyone is going to be doing some very cool things. Should yep, but if you guys are going to be outside today, mm-hmm. uh, it is out to lunch, and it's a perfect day to be out there uh, enjoying the nice summer day because it's going to be a hot one. Um, currently, it is 54 degrees outside. You're going to get a high of 89 and a low of 53 degrees outside. Of course, Thursday, there's 70% chances of showers, so it's increased what? since Monday. So you can expect those showers to start Thursday night and continue on uh, um, pretty much uh, Friday. So, you, you know, of course, everything will start cooling down by Thursday. So, um, yeah. Um, of course, Saturday is supposed to be sunny again, but everything's going to be like... 10 or oh 15 gosh. degrees cooler. So if you guys are gonna, um, yeah, yesterday it was so hot. It was. It was crazy. Scorching all day long. People mm-hmm. were complaining. Today I was, was like, calm down. Summer's almost over. Today's gonna be uh, not as hot as yesterday, but it's still gonna have remnants of what the heat was yesterday. Mm-hmm. But of course, by the time the weekend hits, everything's gonna be nice and cool for any outdoor activities that you guys want to do. Awesome. But of Sounds course, if you great. want to find out more information, you can go to weather.gov. Um, but of course, if you want to learn more about us. Um, which is our show, which is Wake Up Missoula. <laughs> which is, you're which watching is it what we're right going to show now. you right now. <laughs> it's uh, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. We made you write it out twice. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Mm-hmm. Oh, Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook. And to find out more information about us, just check us out at MCAT.org. And of course, uh, we uh, post um, all our videos, all our community oriented videos on our YouTube as well as online. So you can check mm-hmm. all that, MCAT.org, for all your uh, needs about Missoula community events and lectures, arts and uh, rallies, causes, or band stuff. But of course, if you want to be, uh, if you want to talk about your upcoming um, lecture, rally, cause, or show, you can um, come on our show um, by calling us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542. MCAT. You can also email us mcat at mcat.org. That's simple. And of course, we do have some new programming on tonight. It is... Um, I, uh, it's the, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just what trying to, I'm, I'm trying to struggle. Let me, let me get it out for you guys. Okay. Uh, it's the International Choir Festival. Okay. It's going to be on MCAT. It's been on MCAT last night, but of course, um, I have a clip for you guys to show you along with, uh, there's a pain conference. So Ooh. it's, uh, music and then of course a lecture. <laughs> and when we come back, MCAT. we'll have our guests from the fringe mm-hmm. to talk about their event right after this. No, okay, you can take an extra dose, and it's documented because that may mean that their next script is going to be a day early or whatever. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, addiction versus physical dependence. Uh, so I think we've talked about that. Um, and if the issue is that, they, that they're uh, addicts, then, and if they're active addicts, uh, that you don't want, if they're actually abusing, misusing, whatever, you're not... They need and to be referred for addiction with, uh, treatment, we are um, back here and with you should be Andrea, prescribing and they are for them. Members of the duo uh, Figment, yes. yeah, and so you guys are part of Fridge Fest, and so tell us about yourselves. Um, we have we have all kinds of varied background stories. Um, I have a BFA in graphic design and photography, but then decided I wanted to perform and got leaned into performance art through teaching kids circus section. Cool. So what got, what brought you guys here to Missoula? Um, 
The fringe with Michelle. The, the fringe. Ooh. Michelle is a, <laughs> is, a, is a wonderfully crazy lady. And I talked to her on the phone and I said, okay, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle Richa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Organizer of the fringe. That's okay. awesome. And what can people expect from you guys' performance? Well, uh, Assorted Affair is is our bureaucratic adventure comedy show. So you've, prob- you've probably seen a whole lot of bureaucratic adventure stories. <laughs> so we're asking you to give us a chance to give you a new take on the genre. <laughs> bureaucratic adventure stories. Uh, it's a mix of theater and circus and comedy. It's uh, set in a parallel surreality of where good and bad and all messy things are contained in boxes. And our show is the slow comedic unraveling of this neat separation into a more messy... Don't give away the end. <laughs> you don't know. You have to come see no, to still, see what yeah. happens. We keep everything very nice and orderly, separated into good and bad. Mm-hmm. 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 And um, when can people see the good and the bad? The... Well, you mean when are we when are we yes. performing? Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't throw it out there for a second. Well, I mean, if it's in the white box, yeah. <laughs> pop a show. Uh, Thursday, five o'clock, mm-hmm. Crystal Theater. No, that's at Dunrobin. Thursday, six thirty. At Dunrobin. At yeah. Dunrobin. Friday, five o'clock at the Crystal, and Saturday, seven o'clock at Downtown Dance Collective. Awesome. And so, what is your process like when you make a show like this? How do you guys come up with this? Uh, we locked ourselves in the studio <laughs> with a pile of boxes, is kind of what Yeah, about 20 uh, Office Depot filing boxes, mm-hmm. and then uh, various stumbling rounds in the studio, coupled with almost falling asleep, and I got an idea. <laughs> do you have a notebook? Let's write it down before we fall asleep. Yeah, and then waking up and trying to make sense of these sleepy dream concepts. Yeah, it's, it's kind of through through dreamscapes, maybe, mm-hmm. is how we find a lot of inspiration. And is this your first show like this? This is our very first full-length show. Yeah, yeah first we, duo show. But we've, we've done several. We've performed for a variety of shows and cabaret shows and that kind of thing. So we've, we've made five, ten-minute acts together before. And then roped some of it into the narrative of a sordid affair. We uh, we taped it. We red, red taped it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of red tape in yeah. case you're looking for more red tape to cut. Right. Part of the inspiration for, for this show was <laughs> actually a, a trip to the DMV. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 tell us about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you been? Have you been? You know, I always, <laughs> the, Missoula D, the Missoula DMV is different in the way that you can make an appointment. Yeah. And you can show up oh. and you're like, I'm You here. can make an appointment in Oakland too, but it doesn't mean that that's when you'll be served. You show up at 3 o'clock and you'll be served at 6 or the next day maybe if you're lucky. Oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's more of our courthouse takes forever Yeah. Our compared courthouse. to uh, our DMV, which is more like, please come. Please say hi to us. Because <laughs> it's still like empty in there. So Every lonely. time I've been there, it's just like, it's oh, awesome. we're lonely. Please help us. It's so Sure, so our we DMV could tell, is very empty. Okay, yeah. so we should tell Missoula that <laughs> it was inspired by a trip to the courthouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> after we were arrested from. Oh, well, uh, never mind. well, Missoulians are taught to uh, buy locally, but think globally, so <laughs> they can totally understand what okay. we're like. Okay, good. As long as they can empathize with our situation in Oakland, <laughs> California. Nice. And so, you guys have a performance you're going to do for us. Tell us about what you're about to do. Oh, we just have a little. Just yeah, a little bit. our show is is very three dimensional, mm-hmm. and see when I go like this, you can't see my hand. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> still can't see it. Um, so our show, we we're just doing something that we can actually do in this studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I this stand on his good. shoulders and yeah, things go so, flying. So the but. show involves all sorts of circus um, arts, including acrobatics and dance and. Um, Mime and clown. Yes. Don't tell them that. Uh, I, I know those are bad words. Don't say yeah. clown. I'll, Nobody I'll will come. <laughs> I was we particularly impressed answers. by your really cool um, isolation you guys did with like your heads and mm-hmm. your shoulders. What are you talking that about? Was, yeah. This is just how I normally move. Yeah, that. <laughs> and then all of your flips and you. I I loved it. I was super impressed by you guys. I was stoked. Yeah. So mm-hmm. thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thanks. yeah. <laughs> Great. Cool. Well, we'll give you guys some room. Okay. Let's take it away. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I don't know where. Oh yeah. You guys, right there. Be perfect. Be. Okay. Do you want that ball? Oh, we probably don't need yeah, it. Yeah, I do this here. Hold on. I guess you just choose the camera that you're doing, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't do that.
<laughs> That's about it. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, you guys. Well, I'll give you back your red tape before you Oh, <laughs> did you want some? I kind of Here, yeah. here. I'll you keep know, some red tape. Here, have, as, there's, as there's always plenty of red tape in the world. red tape. You know, this yeah. is a symbol <laughs> of Thank all you. the things the world tells you not to do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so hopefully you'll so cut this at some point. Don't forget what the world tells you not to do. Here's some for you too. Yes. Yay. Thanks, you guys. And of course, I have your uh, little um, handout. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right up. Card. And so one more time, where can people uh, go see you? So it's called A Sorted Affair, and we'll be at Dunrovin Ranch tomorrow, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be helping facilitate a, a kid's performance with yeah. some, some toy horses. We'll do a comedy play. stick horse act. Yeah, the and then Friday night at the Crystal Theater at 5 p.m. And Saturday at 7 p.m. at the Downtown Dance Collective. Yeah. Awesome. And so if people want to find out more information about you two, yeah. where they, they can... We, we're on Facebook as Figmentally. Mm-hmm. Figmentally. It's, it's on the card. It says Figmentally, yeah. And then, yeah, there's that's a, probably the There's a trailer for our show. Oh, oh awesome. Gosh, oh, yeah. shit, I wish I knew yeah. that. We'll look it up and play it later. Okay. Yeah. I could give you the link or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll combine the videos and we'll be able to the interview and the trailer at the same time. Ooh, awesome. In post. In Great. Post. Oh, it's so in post. Like, yeah. And we'll cut this out. We can just yeah. act yeah. out in the trailer. Yeah. yeah. Cut this out. <laughs> just act out the trailer. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. Thank well, you. anything else before we let you guys go? I think that's it. Yeah. Check us out on Facebook, yeah. Fit Mentally. And uh, our show, everyone in the audience is an employee at the Bureau. Yeah, so, so come ready to be hired. job, hard. come get a job and, and yeah. come work with us at the show. And it's, it's very family friendly as well. We'd like oh to yeah, say we, kids, found kids. Out, we found out <laughs> yeah. the first time we did the show that kids like it. Which is a very nice surprise kids love the for show. us. And they, and oh, they, yeah. give, they give the adults permission to laugh when the, when the kids oh, start yeah. giggling, then, then everybody's like, okay, that's funny. That's fine. That's awesome. That's fine. And like adults are like, what's going on? And the kids yeah. are just like, oh, they're ha, ha, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, they do a yeah. lot of context for sure. Yeah. We do children's programs too here and there. Cool. Great. Yeah. It's very rewarding. <laughs> All right. Well, Thank we'll check them out, guys. Um, we'll be right back. We have a lot more on the show. Um, Noel has events. I have uh, Hallmark or Bullmark, and we have a whole bunch of other stuff. We have City Council too. too. Oh, yeah. We need yeah. that too. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> See you guys. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. No matter what you're planning, if you plan to drink, plan to have a friend get you home. Get ride home ideas and tools at plantolive.mt.gov. 
Hi, guys. Hey, we're back. Um, <laughs> welcome back to our show Hello. called Wake Up Missoula. We are here. And here. yeah, we we're just rushing to get everything all set for the next part of our show, which is events with Noel. I'm just going to quickly yeah. um, uh, delay as I quickly get Noel's camera so just all set. I was, um, I thought that we would have a lot more interviews today and a lot more going on, than which we already have a lot going on. So I only have Wednesday events for you guys. Nice. So yeah, so I'll tell you guys what's going on today. Because there's a lot going on today. Dude, there's a lot. Yeah, so I've got Wednesday events, and then I'll tell you about what's going on with Fringe Fest this afternoon as well. So we're switching gears now over to my own camera. Okay. <laughs> okay, so over at the Missoula Public Library, it is their open hours in the makerspace starting at 10 a.m. You can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment that usually goes all day long, so from 10 to 6 all day. Over in the Florence Building Lounge, they've got an Essentials Oils Basics class that starts at 10 a.m. Um, and so it is only gonna last an hour and it looks like it's free, but you can still call 544-6582. <laughs> Over at Kerr's Park, out to lunch, the Kenny James Miller Band will be playing. They'll also have it food vendors, children's activities, and it is sponsored by us, MCAT. So go on down there. I'll be down there with a table, hopefully, um, and we'll be promoting MCAT. You should probably bring a computer, maybe. You know, <laughs> you know just like have your own little um, stop animation station. Yeah. If you want to do that, it's I was you. totally thinking I was thinking I would do that. You'd have a whiteboard. We can use our easel. I, the easel's yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. And just go be like, what are you doing? I was doing stop animation. I'm just doing stop animation. Well, because you, it would be a good way to promote our Saturday drop-ins, which start again in September after Labor Day. It's the first weekend after Labor Day. It's a great chance for your kid, age 9 to 13, to come in for $10 for four hours. They just do some stop animation and yeah. we make movies and just have a good old time. It's a lot of fun. We get cray. Yep. Especially on those rainy Saturday days. It's good to give your kid to us and then we can like make him tired. Yep. Wear him out. So I'm going to promote the heck out of it. <laughs> heck yeah, Scott. Yeah. Heck yeah. Woo! Okay. <laughs> no, I'm swearing, swearing. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> okay, moving on. Over at the Children's Museum of Missoula, they have tale activities starting at 11 o'clock. This is, they read a book and then they do an art theme after that. Or they do a story theme craft. You guys know. Over at Spectrum Discovery Area, the Discovery Bench is Optics, and their Brain Lab is, did you hear that? It starts at 11 o'clock and it's $3.50. Science Sprouts is also at Spectrum Discovery Area. It starts at 11, and that is for the younger crowd. That's usually between ages 2 to 5, and their theme today is smell and taste. Over at the Missoula Public Library, they've got a couple activities going on. They have their kids' table that starts at 11.30. Ages 18 and under can go in there and get a free, nutritious lunch, and then they always do an activity right after that. Missoula Public Library is also hosting an Android, tablets, and smartphone class. So it's at 12.30. So if you've got an Android, you have a tablet or a smartphone, but you don't really know how to use it, you can register at the library by calling 721-2665. It's from 12.30 to 1.30 in their computer classroom today. Over at Taste Buds Kitchen, which is the cooking classes, they do, do geared towards children. They have some adult ones, but mostly it's for the little ones. They have got a mystery basket cooking camp from ages 9 to 13 today, starting at 1 p.m. And they'll be featuring both savory and sweet recipes. Um, it'll be $195 per week, so if you want to go to every class throughout the whole week, or it's just $45 per day. You can call 616-2837 for more information. Over at the Top Hat Lounge, they've got their Sharing in the Groove. This is their Celebrating the Music of Fish. It's a fish-themed happy hour complete with show audio, video, and trivia. It's free and it's all ages. Over at Imagination Brewing Company, they've got a farmer's market at the brewery. It starts at 5 o'clock. You can go get your fresh produce there uh, that you forgot to get to over the weekend or forgot to get on Tuesday. At the Kettle House Northside Tap Room, they've got their community unite. This happens every Wednesday. 50 cents from each beer sold goes to the nonprofit of the night. So this evening will be North Missoula Community Development. And they have been making the neighborhoods north of the river more livable for people of all incomes, ages, and abilities for 20 years. 
At the Zootown Arts Community Center, they've got their glass fusing orientation class. This starts at 6 p.m. This introductory class will cover the basics of glass from how the kindling process works to slumping, fusing, and mold making. You can call 549-7555 for more information about that. At Imagination Brewing Company, they've got a couple of things going on. They've got their Imagination Jam Society. They have their public jam. It starts at 6 o'clock, so you can go there and jam out. And then they have another essential oils workshop. That's also at 6. So you can make your own essential oils. And essential oils are really good for everyday life. They can make you feel better. They can help heal. I don't know if they can help heal ailments, but they do a lot of good things for you. A lot of benefits that I don't know anything about. So you guys should go on in there and find it out. And maybe call me and let me know. <laughs> All right, and then over at Lola Peak Brewing Company, they have a pint night. Uh, 75 cents from each pint sold is going back to Mismo Elite Gymnastics. And then our good friend, Kate Davis, she has got a uh, summer storyteller over at Rattler's Rest State Park, 7 o'clock. She's going to be talking to friends about Raptors of Rockies, and she'll probably bring some of her feathered friends as well. The Sunrise Saloon has hosting country dance lessons with instructor Kathy Clark. This starts at 7 p.m. It's only $5 per lesson, and she'll teach you how to stomp around in your boots, which is always fun. I love stomping in my boots. The Eagles Lodge has got a karaoke contest at 8.30. Over at the Top Hat Lounge, also at 8.30, is a Jeff Austin band. It's a Grateful Dead tribute band. Um, I don't know, it doesn't say how much tickets are, but it should be good. I went to my first Grateful Dead concert like a month ago, uh, maybe a couple weeks ago. It was great. I decided I'm just going to quit life and follow around the Grateful Dead. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Over at the Badlander, they've got karaoke at 9 o'clock. The Palace has got Milk Crate Wednesday at 9 o'clock, which is electronic music. Sunrise Saloon has got, uh, also has karaoke at 9, so you can uh, learn your country dance lessons and then you can dance around some karaoke. Yeah. At the Real Lounge, they've got a couple bands, Sunraiser and Deli, Danny the Skeleton Horse will be playing at 9. Also, over at Stage 112, which is above the Real Lounge, Pachin will be playing at 9 o'clock. And then, uh, it's, it looks like it's 8 bucks, or no, $5, sorry guys. Okay, and then now we've got some Zootown Fringe Festival stuff happening. So, Zootown Fringe has got Porch Fest. Porch Fest starts at 2 o'clock. What it is, is a music on, um, <coughs> excuse me, it's music on the 200 and 300 block of South 4th Street. So that's today. Starts at 2 o'clock. Up first, they've got Matthew Nord Living Rhythm Community Drum Circle. 3 o'clock is Mark Kirsting and Friends. 3.30 is Andrea Harsell. 4.15 is Marlene Hutchins and Carla Green. 5 o'clock is Mickey Singer All-Stars. 5.45 is Montana A. Capella Society. 6.30 is Phyllis Eric and the Ruby Jewel Band. 7.15 is The Organism. 8 o'clock is D. Ryan. And 9 o'clock is Cash for Junkers. So, and then they also have some street art. They've got the Tippy Top, Brass District, and Mermaid, uh, Mermaid Avenue. And then they have got some shows from the Von Karman artists. And so that'll be 200, 300 block South 4th Street West over by the Kettle House just off of the hip strip starting at 2 o'clock. Um, and I know that MCAT will be there on and off all day. So if you can't catch some of the performances today, you'll be able to catch them on our channel in a month. <laughs> you'll have to wait. There is a uh, Fringe Ladies Clothing Swap for the Zootown Fringe Fundraiser. That's going to be, it looks like it's going to be at the Crystal, I do believe. And so it's 10 bucks. Uh, it starts at 5, ends at 8. All proceeds go towards supporting the Zootown Fringe Fest. They ask that you make sure you launder all of your clothes on very high heat, on high laundry setting, so that everything is clean and fresh. You're not spreading around all the, you know, germs. Yeah. And so it's at the Crystal Theater from 5 to 8 today. And then my last event for Fringe Fest is, it looks like it's Fringe on the Ghetto Gypsy Bust. So from 8.30 to 9, Seattle comedian Cody Howell will be uh, performing. And then from 9 to 9.30 will be Gingers on Ice. And then 9.30 to 10 will be Spiritus Presents Generations. Um, and so it's $5, $2 for seniors, and they're asking only mature audiences. 
So that's what's going on in your fringe and your community events. For community events, check out MissoulaEvents.net, the independent, the Missoulian, or the um, Miz- Missoulian Intimate University of Montana website. Sorry, you guys. And then as for Zootown Fringe stuff, just go to ZootownFringe.org and you'll just click on their community calendar and it's all correct. And so it's up to date. Click on the community calendar. You can see what's going on. So that's what I've got going on in your community. Up next, musical notes with Asaf Adonai. I was going to say the, la- the name of that last song was called uh, Surrey with a Fringe on Top. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> for your audience, if they happen to notice that since you're talking about that. Okay. While staying in Alaska, our guest on today's Musical Notes was working as a part-time bartender when he discovered a TV show called The Magic of Oil Painting. Our guest discovered he was able to earn more from selling his artwork than the position he had in the United States Air Force. So after 20 years of service, our guest became famous worldwide for creating and hosting a TV show called The Joy of Painting we're talking about Robert Norman Ross, known to the world as Bob Ross. <laughs> and there he is on the screen. I mean, this guy just brought a lot of joy in the lives of people with his talents and abilities to paint and draw. He used what was called a wet on wet technique, which you see on his show there. And if we have this video, let's catch him in action and I'll do some narrating. Here he's doing a, a scene it's uh, the Arctic scene like in Alaska because he got a lot of inspiration from his artwork when he was in Alaska during the military years. And what he's going to do in this scene here, he's going to use some green and do some touch up to create grass on a mountain scene. Now he's often compared to Mr. Rogers, uh, Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers neighborhood because of his soft demeanor, you know, his smooth style of speaking when he's teaching people. He's taught classes all over the world. He's, um, he has students to this day, including his sons that have carried on his tradition of painting. Now, Bob Ross, he, uh, let me get my notes here. Of course, he was an American painter, an art instructor, and a television host, best known as the creator and host of Joy of Painting, as I mentioned. And it's an instructional television program that aired in 1983 to 1994 on PBS in the United States. It aired in Canada, Latin America, and Europe. Ross was born in Daytona Beach, Florida and raised in Orlando. He had, he had, he's been, he spent, at the age of 18, he spent 20 years in the military as a medical records te- technician and he went to the rank of Master Sergeant. And as I said, he um, spent a lot of years up in Alaska and got a lot of his inspiration for his artwork, artwork with shows. And um, to launch off his show, when it fir- after he retired from the military, to save money on expenses and stuff, he got a perm, which went on to become <laughs> his iconic figure and image and brand. So he didn't have to spend money getting haircuts, he just had the perm and just, it followed him. (laughs) He earned $15 million in a business to help create his own line of art supplies, how-to books, and offering painting classes taught by the Bob Ross method. He has 20 books, 100 videotapes, and the profits from some of his um, artwork that sold nationally has gone to the PBS network, like his paintings and so on. And of course, he was able to support his family also, stuff like that. So he, as I said, he's brought a lot of joy to the world. He's appeared in 89 on the Joan Rivers show. He returned in 92 for Regis Philbin and Kathy Lee Gifford. And he was also in 94 on the Phil Donahue show. So that gives you an idea of his popularity all around the world, appearing on talk shows and just bringing joy to the world with joy, the joy of painting. And on that note, I'll stop. Nice. Thank you very much, Asa. Uh, musical notes with Asa out of nine. Yes. Um, we, what we usually do is we have another part of events for today, mm-hmm. but of course we're going to switch gears because yeah. we have something special Ooh. we want to show y'all. And it is a new camera that MCAT just got. It is a live streaming um, mini camera that does for live concerts and live events. I think it is one of my, uh, definitely, 
one of my favorite new toys it's of all time. It's pretty sweet. So it's this tiny little thing, but you have to download an app on your phone, and you hook it up to your phone, you know, download your app. And so what you can do is that you have, like, multiple different camera angles on the mm -hmm. your phone. So here, we'll... Uh, yeah, I guess so you can kind of see. <laughs> so we get a shot of that, and I'm going to get a little bit yeah. closer, and then Noelle will kind of continue. And so what you have is like, you can have like a wide shot, you can have close-ups, you can have lots of different angles that you can do. And so I see there's a wide shot, but if Scott wanted to zoom up just on my face or just on Asaph's face, all he has to do is go like that. And then so up in the right-hand corner is the box, and that'll actually be what you'll be seeing right there. And so there you go, you get the wide shot, and then you get the up close shot. You can also do several other angles, and then you just tap the button to which one you want angle to go to, or which angle you want it to go to. So it's very, very cool. We ordered this a couple months ago, and we've been waiting for it all summer long, all spring and summer, yep. and we're super stoked to have it. And yeah. so it's live streaming, um, and I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This Ladies is like a. Um, this is what uh, people would call a commercial, unfortunately. But uh, you know, it's a really cool, nice little toy, and it's really great to have. We're really um, excited about it. And I'm definitely gonna try it out um, when the Roots Festival come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the first kind of like the thing I'll probably try to do. So I'll just like, get in contact with them and say, I, I want to try this, you know, new device out, blah, 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 and see if your event was willing to do this. Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. Be, and it's supposed to be live streaming, so we'll be able to live stream it on uh, Facebook and, of course, also live stream it on their website, which we can also configure to put it on our live stream um, here at MCAT, which could also be live streamed at MCAT.org yep. right here. So, you know, we'll try to get it on our local live one, so, you know, like, Local Live is our official live stream channel that we have on our website. You click on it, and then it would show you the live stream right here. But of course, um, we just got it, so the, the next big thing is trying to configure it. Yes, <laughs> figure it out. Yep. But it's a very cool machine, and we're all super excited about it. But of course, let's switch gears. We're, now we're going during, um, do, we're doing the uh, city council. Mm -hmm. So city council, they were talking about um, a lot of different things happening there. But one, uh, but there's two things that uh, really kind of outshined one another, and it was basically kind of like the public kind of. Um, um, I, I guess I don't know. I'm trying to find public the right word without pleased. very the displeased, very displeased with some of the uh, uh, elected officials here mm -hmm. in town, from the city council members and county commissioner. Oh, interesting. So um, I'll, I'll, the first one is um, Ward Two, um, Harlan Wells. Some of his residents are kind of concerned that the fact that he hasn't really shown up to a lot of meetings mm -hmm. as much as he should show up to a meeting, um, f uh, from their opinion. So of course, uh, this is Anita Green and she's going to uh, kind of kick it off. So take it away, Anita. I'm here today to address the attendance of Councilman Harlan Walls. Councilman Walls has a very low attendance record. And according to public record, Walls has one of the lowest attendance records of any council member in the entire history of Missoula's City Council. I find this to be particularly egregious because as a constituent of Walls, I, find, I feel as though I am not being represented well and I also know that many people in War Two feel the same way. By not regularly attending council meetings, the ideas of Wells constituents are not being accurately represent uh, are not being accurately expressed. Furthermore, the fact that Wells is not consistently showing up for his job is a waste of taxpayers' money and completely immoral, which on a similar note is incredibly hypocritical for Wells to do to do, considering he has publicly accused this council of acting immorally. Harlan Wells was quoted in the Missoula Current as saying, quote, I can't make as many meetings as I'd like to, but when I'm here, I try to point out things that are fiscally questionable, end quote. That's funny, considering he himself is doing something fiscally questionable, which, again, is wasting taxpayers' money by not being paid, by, excuse me, by being paid for a job he decides not to show up for. Wells also said, quote, I have a regular nine to five job, so I'm sorry I am not a retiree or don't work for the university, end quote. That's interesting considering only one person on Missoula City Council is retired and only two people uh, work for the university. So Ms. Green, we're bordering on what I consider personal attack here, so I'll ask you to kind of wrap it up for me, please. Okay. Um, I am asking for Har uh, Councilman Harlan Wells to show up regularly for his um, meetings, or if that is not possible, he needs to resign. Thank you. All right, so Ooh. that is um, 
that's happening right now. Uh, and, and of course, we have another quote from another resident of War II who also expresses the same concern as Anita Green. And this is, hold on, let me get uh, her name. This is uh, Melissa, uh, Melissa Rochek, and she uh, agrees with Ms. Green. And I'm also here to um, express displeasure over the lack of involvement in my representative. And I, you know, I've watched the meetings and check it, see the attendance and I don't know, less than 65% just doesn't seem to be a passing grade for the representation that I want in Ward 2. And I would like to see something improve on that area. All right, and of course, um, Harlan Wells was in attendance of that meeting and he uh, expressed no comment. Oh, huh. Yep. And um, uh, it, it was earlier said last Wednesday, um, John Wilkins also made a mention to, uh, it was during the finance and administration meeting that uh, Harlan Wells should be kind of like, um, kind of like talked to about certain things because he's been kind of um, been known to criticize the uh, city, uh, the city of Missoula in the newspaper um, as well. Hmm, interesting. So that's uh, that's just that. That's that. I'll leave that at that. And let's. I'm going to move on to the next um, quote, which is from. Um, this is Samantha uh, Paulington, and she represents Sound Sunflower um, Montessori. Montessori. Oh no, no, it's uh, Montessori. Montessori. Yeah, maybe that was autocorrect. Don't. Worry. But it's it's a it's a um, it's a preschool for kids, and they're trying to like kind of like expand, give it a little more space. And they've actually come under uh, scrutiny from um, County Commissioner Stacy Rye for this or that. Um, but of course, uh, but of course, during the public hearing, this is um, this is what um, what uh, sorry, um, Samantha Paulington said about um, Stacy Rye. Stacy Rye has made many untrue and unfounded statements in reference to our school in her public opinion statements. I would like to take the time to address these untrue accusations. Our school has the appropriate egress windows. Our school has never been shut down to, due to non-compliance or any other reason for that matter. Prior to our purchase of Sunflower, the school had more children in attendance, but kept in the square footage regulations per child. Our decision to lower the number of students is our personal preference on how we would like the school to operate. Petty as it may be, I also need to address her complaints about the animals involved in our school. We did have a rooster. We purchased chicks and raised them. There is no way to tell whether a chick will become a rooster until it ages. Upon the realization that the chick was a rooster, he was found a new home. It is true that we had a rabbit escape for a few days. We contacted the neighbors to make them aware. This was not malicious. Ms. Rye obviously did not take the time to check her facts before making such accusations of us or the previous owners. I find it in particularly bad taste for our county commissioner to make such a statement as, I have no reason to believe the new owners will behave any differently. We do not know or understand the issues that Ms. Rye had with the former owners but would expect a public servant to allow us to make our own impression upon the neighborhood. We service a large number of families who trust us with the care of the most important thing in their lives, their child. With that being said, I would like to close with the old adage, it takes a village to raise a child. Sunflower Montessori cares for and educates children in Missoula. Our impact on the neighborhood should be one of joy, not of nuisance, and we are doing everything within our power to make this happen. We invite Ms. Rye to address her concerns to us and welcome a discussion on how to work with her needs while addressing the needs of the families that we serve. All right. So that was um, um, Samantha? I, Samantha Paulington, and she uh, from um, Sunflower Montessori. And so, so the city county commissioner made comments about the school. Yeah, she actually lives near the school. Oh, okay. And then and she actually made a comment. If you guys want to check it out, it's she did a, a community meeting last Wednesday mm -hmm. where she addressed her comments in a public comment session of their expansion of their uh, area. Oh. And a lot of the uh, scrutiny that this place has come under is parking. Mm -hmm. Like parking is a huge issue in Missoula, and. Um, from what they've said and what has been told is that they haven't had any problems with parking. And um, a lot of the uh, scrutiny that's been thrown at them uh, from not just Stacey Ray, but also others is um, the alleyway. Mm -hmm. They want to keep the alleyway clear because it's where the garbage pickup is and all that mm -hmm. stuff. They don't want to have too many cars there. They have like four designated parking spots 
in the school. Mm -hmm. So when you have a bunch of kids, you know, and they want the parents to go inside with their kids, you can't just drop off a kid because these are little little kids. Yeah. These aren't just the kids yeah. you can just like <laughs> bye. bye, see you later. Yeah. But um, so th from what I've heard is that the, the, it's pretty pretty solid. They park on the side street, take the kid out into the front because the in front entrance is the front entrance because mm -hmm. there's no access to the preschool from the from the um, from the alleyway, mm -hmm. and they actually tell parents not to drop off their kid in the alleyway or anything like that. So they have to go around the front mm -hmm. on 6th Street. Yeah, so th interesting. So that, there was some um, problems with this and that. And um, I guess, you know, I can understand, like, uh, people in the neighborhood complain about maybe this or that. Like, oh, there's a bunch of noisy kids, those darn kids. And then there's also the, uh, you know, with the rooster thing, mm. which it's is, um, you know, like, it's a rooster. They're loud, make noises, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's, like, one or two days of rooster calls and all that stuff. And you then, are allowed to have chickens in city limits, mm -hmm. though. Well, so. it, I, I think, it, it, and also it's the noise ordinance. Mm -hmm. There's a noise ordinance that you're not supposed to exceed X amount of dBs after 10 p.m., but before, like, 6 a.m. or something mm -hmm. like that. And, mm -hmm. of course, sun rises earlier yep. this time of year. So, um, But, yeah, that's uh, kind of it, what they were talking about. Um, so there, just a lot of, like, like a scrutiny a, towards uh, yeah. your constituents here in town, which, you know, I guess it's just... Sometimes what happens. Yeah, it totally does, which, uh, I don't know, not everyone is set out to be a leader and not everyone is really, uh, can fit the bill. But also, so. um, not many people uh, like Artly, exactly. <laughs> some of the leaders. I mean, it's it's all like a one way or the other, and because um, the, the city council all is also not in favoritism because of their moving forward with the demolition of the mercantile as well. So um, there's a lot of like hurt feelings all going around. I agree, yeah. Especially when you have something like this, mm -hmm. like because the mercantile is some, something that's so rich in history. But of course, I don't want to get on the mercantile. It's it, it's exactly what I wanted to avoid because this wasn't about the mercantile. This is actually about a bunch of, uh, the main the main chunk of the meeting was actually about, uh, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the city right words. Projects. It was all city funded um, nonprofits, mm -hmm. uh, the projects and other stuff that happens in the city. Like uh, you have City Band that's actually funded by the city, which only gives them probably about eight hundred to a thousand dollars a year wow, that's to nothing. keep um, the city Everything band going. Yeah, and of course they always have like people wandering around with uh, bags, you know, like uh, like a collection dish, mm -hmm. but it's called the Band Aid. <laughs> I love that. That's good. Yeah, well, and, city bands are important, I think, and I think that it's a mm -hmm. wonderful thing to do, and I'm glad that people get back to it. Yeah, city, and uh, I did uh, when I was watching all the. Uh, um, City Council meetings last week. Of course, I didn't uh, like uh, um, do a report on Friday on it, but I kind of got the general gist of it. Um, but this was the meeting where uh, basically all the uh, the people who thought their funding was going to mm -hmm. get cut came up to front and say that they shouldn't be cut uh, because um, they are they're doing really well. I'm, I'm assuming that all these organizations are great and wonderful and all that stuff, but unfortunately, there's way too many to be funded. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have one one pie for. Mm -hmm more people you keep on inviting. It's like, hey man, come to my party. It's like, oh, you and the, we have this piece of pie. Well, don't worry, we'll just cut it thinner. It's like, well, last year, I got a bigger slice of pie. I was like, no, you're gonna get this slice of pie. It's like, oh, we, I can't like survive off that pie. Like, I need more pie. I was like, mm, sorry, we can't do it. It's like, if you give me a bigger chunk of pie, I promise you I will not need any more pie later on. I'll actually need less later on. Then why do you need more now? So that's kind of like the, the metaphor behind your this. analogies really make me understand things very correctly yeah. and very well thank you but it's that. it's crazy because a lot of the city funds a lot of projects and it's always like they want to like start these nonprofits and be like hey we're here to support you we want to start with these things and these nonprofits come back and are just like oh well um uh, we want Figure the same money out. yeah <laughs> yeah and then like it's like it's spread out it's spread really thin because there's too many to spread it out so mm -hmm. they had to cut it and then, of course, they also would not want to raise any fees or taxes on anything because then that would even get the, the wow. majority populace even angrier about it. So it's, it's, it's all, it's a catch-22. And so what Scott <laughs> note, Scott's notes here say the city, like jail diversion program, city band, Humane Society, International Choir Festival. Animal wow, control. Things like that. Animal, Animal control. control has uh, basically had only one employee in animal control for the last, like, it feels like it's the last decade. Wow. The way they argue about it and all this stuff is like, oh, we're gonna, we wanna add more money so we can add another part-time animal control person because a lot of times, animals are big. Animal control is part-time? Animal control is a full-time, but if they okay. do cut any of their stuff, it, they would have to they switch to part-time. Part wow, that's really, huh. Well, Missoula, my yeah. opinions 
<laughs> My opinions do not represent Charter <laughs> Communication, the City of Missoula, or Missoula Community Access Television. But our City Council, I feel like they really uh, need to spend money on things that really matter rather than things that don't matter. Mm. But everything seems like it matters, unfortunately. Everything seems like they're doing a good cause. Jail Diversion is a great cause. And, yeah, Jail Diversion is good. City Band is good. Humane Society and is good. And City Band has actually actually taken less money over mm -hmm. the years because the, the, all these other programs, they, they've been really good about this. And they're one of the longest funded organizations in Missoula. They uh, quoted um, Gary Gillette came up to the microphone and said he quoted that the city had officially uh, started funding the city band since the 1920s. Wow. That's how long the city band, and it's basically basically kind of got chopped in half and bits and pieces have dropped over the years to the point where it's only like barely anything a year. I just feel like there are things that the city council has passed and put money in mm -hmm. that uh, really we didn't need. Yeah, and then on and one then, hand... then it's taking money away from these stuff that we do need. Yeah. And then on one hand, uh, the International Choir Festival, they have their choir festival every three years. They mm -hmm. get actually $36,000 a year. Oh, wow. So they can raise money for that. But they also, their justification behind it is that because it brings in so many people, it also booms the economy. And they had a, a study, they actually said in 2013, the, uh, there was an economic boom in Missoula that raised X amount of money mm -hmm. because of it. Mm -hmm. and it, it. And it was just like, oh, okay. Interesting. But it, at the same time, it's like, what do you do? Yeah. When you, when you start funding a whole bunch of programs and then you have the older programs who, you, you know, like a lot of times the city maybe believe that maybe they can fund themselves eventually, they, that they've been basically funded for 16 years. Wow. A lot of organizations that could mm -hmm. be funded or could raise their own money a lot mm -hmm. of times mm -hmm. like it's it's ridiculous mm -hmm. there's um, I mean I'm not gonna mention any names but there's a couple programs that maybe should definitely start raising their own money in their own ways they should actually hire a grants writer or something like that especially all the arts ones. we write our grants here mm -hmm. we raise our own money here like we raise a lot of money here but we don't actually depend on um, fundraising for MCAT yeah. which is nice. Which is nice, but at the same time, we also don't depend on the city for our money as well, except we uh, get like a cut or it's, it's, it's really weird because. It's all very confusing. M MCAT, okay, here's a simple MCAT is funded by um, cable subscriptions. Mm -hmm. So whoever has charter communications, it goes to charter, and whatever net gross um, charter gets that year, um, the net uh, profit, uh, maybe like a percent of a percent, goes to uh, the city of Missoula for using our cable. Um, power line or whatever it's like it's like right-of-way kind of deal so it's like renting our cable lines awesome and then from that you know they the city takes a cut of that money so it's basically just uh, money that goes to the city and then part of it goes to the Missoula Community Access Television which is actually city run which shows a lot of city meetings as well it's all a conspiracy <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's uh, there's just yeah this is a uh, th this is another year uh, of course a lot of the city council members are um, were, were all gung-ho about cutting this or that um, and there's a say oh well, maybe we should just cut 10 percent across the line for everybody <laughs> it sounds like the university <laughs> yeah well thanks Scott Yep. That all sounds really That's confusing. That's all your city council report. Difficult. And now I'm going to bring it back a little bit, and we're going to have a little bit of fun. Yes. With, uh, one of my favorite segments I like to call Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I just want some, like, rock music to play. <laughs> okay. Hallmark Bullmark is uh, sponsored by nobody. If you would like to sponsor it, please do. Anyways, um, so I read a synopsis from a hall... Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you guys at home and here have to determine whether it's real, Hallmark, or Bull, Bullmark. Hence the name, <laughs> Hallmark or Bullmark. Let's play. Fading pop star Debbie Taylor is on the verge of losing everything, including her freedom. Paparazzi. <laughs> when she runs away to suburban Ohio, because that's where you go, uh, where she finds her way into teaching music to a talented group of mis misfit kids because they gotta be misfits. <laughs> At first, it seems impossible, but by looking into herself, she's able to bring out the inner beauty in each child. As, she, as her star begins to shine again, she realizes, realizes that maybe it's not her star that makes her happy after all. And the movie is called Summer of Dreams. Debbie Taylor! What a nice gal. No, no. Oh, that's right, interview. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> so is this a... Hallmark original movie, or is this complete Bullmark? Ooh, this is a good one. I would actually, like, I would watch this. 
I'm very imaginative. I'm gonna say, ooh, I don't know. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Hallmark. I'm gonna say Bullmark. And I'm gonna say Hallmark. I'm going with Bullmark. Okay, I just want you to know that one of you is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so who is it? It is a Hallmark original movie. Oh! I'm gonna watch this. Yeah, like it, it, it's really good. It's, it looks really it ridiculous. It looks really good. It looks. It sounds ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Are you guys ready to play round two of Hallmark or Bullmark? Yeah. Okay. What's this next one? Cross the bar. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't go to the bar really. Um, I don't even drink either. Okay. I don't do a lot of things. I'm, I just stay at home and just like exist. <laughs> or I just stay at home and age. Okay. That does lots of stuff. Just not the young stuff like I do. <laughs> I do a lot of young stuff. AKA, I go out, but Scott doesn't. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Whatever. Um, going out doesn't mean you have to be young. I see a lot of old, creepy people with like red hair, red chest hair going, Ew, it's so true. <laughs> Anyways, uh, next um, Hallmark or Bullmark. That, that wasn't Hallmark or Bullmark. This is Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> <laughs> the the whole synopsis of the Hallmark original movie is some old guy. Bleh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bullmark. It's like it's actually Hallmark. Anyways, <laughs> when a widowed suburban mom, she has to be suburban, suburban, takes an internship and enters the fast-paced tech world of millionaires, billionaires, blah blah blah, all that stuff. Uh, it's a learning curve to say the least. Uh, with new apps being invented every day and her livelihood online <laughs> she discovers that although life seems seems to be a lot more digital love needs to be a lot more real and it's called summer love okay now i think this one is bullmark so i do too yeah i'm gonna agree with that yeah i'm down well today, um Scott. I'm so it's sorry. 50 50 um are you guys sure Possibly. <laughs> yes all right well, you guys are wrong, because it's no! a Hallmark original movie. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I got one out of two, anyway. <laughs> I just doubted you all the morning, Scott. I was just like, no. Yeah, th these two are both Hallmark original movie, because, like, seriously, um, August is such a, 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 a cornucopia. A, a cornucopia, that means a lot of <laughs> um, uh, movies from Hallmark, the Hallmark Channel, and they're all, like, summer brand, because August is it's supposed to be summer, while all the other months are like, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. But of course, um, it's going to be hot today, guys. So beware. Uh, be uh, just know all that stuff and just you know wear sunscreen and yeah. try not to get too burned. Oh, and man. of course, uh, feel the burn by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com/slash wakeupmissoula. You could like us on our Facebook page. You could follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. You can like Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook. And to find out more information about us, just check us out on MCAT.org. Oh, that's not MCAT.org, but that's our... Uh, but that's one of our pages. Yep, that's one of our pages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry about that. So thank you very much to Drea and Eric yes. from Figment joining us today on our morning show. Um, and you guys can check them out at the Fringe Fest. Go to ZootownFringe.org for more information and, about uh, that. And we'll post their trailer on our Facebook page. Yes, we yep. will. And yeah. uh, thanks for joining us. If you want to be on our show and talk about your upcoming event, cause, rally, performance, blah, 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 you can um, call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542. MCAT. You can also email us mcat at mcat.org if you're too scared to call. But um, without further ado, uh, thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, thanks to our guests. And I just want to throw up their poster just one more time. And it's a sorted affair. Thursday, 6 30. Yep. Dunn Dun Ranch. Ranch. Uh, mm -hmm. Friday, it's um, 5 p.m. It's at the Crystal Theater. And of course, um, Downtown Dance Collective will be hosting it Saturday at 7 p.m. I suggest you guys check them out. Um, yeah, it's they look be like they're a bundle of fun rolled in red tape. Great to see and all that. Yeah. So for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McAvoy. And you know my name is Scott Ramp. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>